the first time that someone told me about Yanis, it was Yorgos Pan, who's our, our partner over there, and he said, you know, I've got a kid who, his mentality, his makeup, like he was going to be a player. He was the first one that told you you're going to play in the NBA, and you're like, no way. Can you put him in an NBA game right now? You probably cannot. They didn't know who he was because he didn't play AAU basketball. He wasn't on the radar. I was 16, and we went to dinner, and he told me, look, in a year and a half from now, you're going to get drafted, and you're going to be in the NBA. Now, at the time, I was, I was making like $200 a month, you know, trying to help my family. I was like, nah, it's not happening. Nah. Probably at the time, I think he believed in me more than I believed in myself. His base motivation to start playing ball is with his big brother. And it happens here, in this court. That outdoor court was um, in my neighborhood that I grew up in. That was our second home. You know, that's, how, that's where we grew up. Uh, we used to come back from school and told our mom and our dad, Nobody go play basketball. John Hammond and the Bucks have got to have a good development plan for this young man because he's going to need some strength, some development in terms of a player. We're looking down the road. We are on Philadelphia gym where Yanis uh, was practicing and playing before we were being drafted. He was walking daily almost five, five miles, four to five miles, to have a morning practice because usually they have two times uh, per day practice. And uh, when they finished, and he was usually tired, he was uh, coming and sleeping many times here with his brother Costas because he was the younger one and you know they were coming together and he didn't want to, to risk to go back again by foot back home. So, if you come early, around the lunchtime, you will see them, you know, sleeping there most of the times. It was literally like his second house. Yeah. Dude, man, think about what we've, we've grown since, like, 2010. Like, think about in eight years, like, where it's gone, you know? Yorgos Panu is my business partner in Greece, and kind of handles all the stuff that we do in Greece, but he's known Yanis for much longer than I have. Uh, with uh, Jorgos, we uh, used to come watch me play, me and my brothers play. You know, I was always coming back and watch my former team. You know, it was one skinny kid, dangerous skinny. And he was 14 to 15, he was ready to turn uh, 15. And I asked, no, who is this kid? He sent me a grainy film of this six foot eight kid running up and down the floor, playing against your local YMCA guys. And I, I said, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, if he becomes something. The first uh, day that I met him, I told him, you know, our first goal is to build up his body. Literally, he wasn't eating. And uh, the tough thing that was to explain to Yanis that he has to eat differently from his brothers and his family. It's, it's hard to say, you know, to one family with four kids that, okay, Yanis has to eat more, has to eat differently. So we decide to everybody to eat the same. What I am today is because of my family. For me, family is it's everything. The way that players today in Europe pop up onto the NBA radar screen is usually through FIBA tournaments, through the playing with their national team. They go to the Nike Hoop Summit. Giannis wasn't provided with any of those opportunities, and so that made it challenging for NBA scouts to find him because they don't usually go to the second division of Greece. We've got Jonathan Gavoni here because he was one of the guys that went over to Greece and actually talked to Giannis before we all knew who he was. 
the summer before in, in July, his agent emailed me and said, hey, Jonathan, there's a guy here in Greece that you want to take a look at. He's about 6'6", skinny. He's of Nigerian descent. He doesn't have a passport right now. We're trying to figure that out. Klevio Pavlisevic. Και τρέχει στον ενδιασμό, τον ακολουθεί ο Αντετοκούμπο και τον σταματάει. Είναι από τις φάσεις... Both of his parents are Nigerian. His older brother was born in Nigeria as a soccer player there. Um, and they moved um, to Greece, and that's where um, you know, him and his brothers were, were born. And because they have different rules than we do here in the U.S., um, he wasn't automatically given Greek citizenship. And so he was essentially a man without a country until he was 18 years old. Come 2013, I start to get a lot of phone calls from NBA team saying, this is your kid, right? I say, yeah, you, you've got something there. You really need to start paying attention. I'd say probably about after five or six phone calls, the next day I was on the plane, right? And I went to Greece and I went and I watched him play and I went to my partner. I said, okay, no, you, you have something here. We don't know what it's going to be, but at least in the immediate future, you have something that is that can be good. What is your goal for your career? I want to be an NBA, NBA player. Anybody in the NBA that you like to watch and maybe emulate? I used to watch a lot of highlights of Iverson. You know, I had the, uh, how you guys call it? Cornrows. Cornrows. That's a point guard, folks. You remember we used to play two and two? Yeah. Then I was just coming down and doing, you know, the crossovers, acting like I was Iverson. He's got stopped and he breaks his ankles, and he got it! We had cable to watch games, so I used to go to a uh, eatering cafe, yeah, pay like a one dollar so I can watch for 30 minutes. So that's what I used to do a lot. The first time we met... New York? Yeah, you got off the plane. Yeah, we got off the... Yeah, yeah, the night before the draft. Uh, it was weird, you know, because... I, I didn't know you were Greek. Yeah. Um, you didn't know I spoke Greek. Yeah. Το σπίτι μου το κλείσες. Ναι, το έχω κλείσει. Το NBA το πλέον είναι In Greek, we have this term malaka, which is... It can mean anything from asshole to friend to anything you can think of. And he looks at me, he's like, Malaka, he said, Elinas. He's like, you're really Greek. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm really Greek. At this point, I speak four languages fluently. I speak another one halfway decently. That's English. I think the strength of our relationship has been the fact we speak the same language that we're from the same country. <laughs> if we're sitting in a meeting and he doesn't like something, he could say it to me in Greek. We can keep a very straight face and no one has any idea, right? And I think that... We're really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, I'm gonna see what the Canadian goes. <laughs> That's how you know you made it. When you get the Canadian goose on you, Woo! money. I see. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the 2013 NBA Draft. <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks are on the clock right now, and we're through the lottery now. And you start. Looking. You know, you didn't want to come because your family couldn't come. He's like, I don't care about the draft. I'm not coming over if my family's not coming. I was yeah. Like, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're coming over. So I, I, that was the second time leaving the country. I don't want to ruin the draft for everybody, but we're at the point now where you have about a 10% chance of getting a starter. Because at first it was just you, and then when they said, okay, Thanasi can come too, you felt better about going with it, but he was not coming over. Here comes the commissioner with the Bucks pick. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to leave my family back, you know, because I ride and die for my family. And my dad told me at the time, look, you got to go. This might be good for us. And I was like, okay, they told me Thanasi go. Be there, I was like, okay, let's do it. The Milwaukee Bucks select Giannis Adetokounmpo 
from Athens, Greece. He last played for Phil Atletikos in Greece. You remember what the first thing you asked for? Before an interview started, before anything, he said, I need my brother. And are you going to be more offense or defense? I'll be both. It was a really, really nice feeling. My family sacrificed a lot of things that gave me the opportunity for me to be here, and I can't thank them enough every day. His nickname is the Greek Freak. What are you getting with him? You know, um, Jim, we're getting somebody with tremendous upside. Uh, I hate, hate to say things like the sky's the limit, but it really could be. I grew up in a place that if you see somebody like get on a plane and like leave, actually travel to somewhere and like go do what he loves to do and make money doing it, it was like crazy to me. My other brother coached us, I had to make sure like he took over and like, you know, took care of me while he was gone. Thanks and good evening, everyone. No matter how many times you're through it, there's something special about opening night. Glad because no matter where you are in the NBA's pecking order, there's always that excitement and there's always that hope. You know, when I was 18, you know, I didn't have nobody here. I was probably texting him every day, calling him every day. Like, he was my only, you know, outlet. You know, another rookie coming in from Milwaukee, Giannis Adetokounmpo. I'll try and say that the same way every time tonight, but he is quite a story. He's not even 19. He's 19 next month. He's from Greece. He was by himself, so I did everything that I could to make sure that he was comfortable, but I think you'd never been away from your family. You didn't know if your family's going to come. Middleton. Adeta Kumbo fouled by Shepard in the act of shooting. He was vulnerable. He was scared. He would sleep in the gym because he had no reason to go home. He didn't want to go home. He was alone. He looks, he looks like he's about 14 in his first game. That was the most stressful thing for him and for me as well because I know how, how much he wanted to have his family there with him. Back here, we were trying to, to apply for the American visa. We were stressed because the law says that if you were declined three times, it's done. And we were declined once, second time again declined, and then he started calling me to say, Yorgos, if that's going to happen third time and they cannot come, I'm leaving. It was so hard for him. And I always knew in the back of my mind, I was like, we're doing whatever we can, we do whatever we can. And then when I called him that day and I said, your parents got the visa and they can be on the plane, that's when I think he's like, okay. Like, I helped bring his family over, right? Like, that was, to me, that was a very important moment. Giannis out of the Kumbo, a very special night for him. His parents, from right to left, mother, Veronica, father, Charles, youngest brother, Alex, and on the left, 16-year-old, 6'7", Costa out of the Kumbo. Me and Alex, he's seen me grown. Like when I came to the league, I wasn't a man. And I'm very excited and I'm just very happy. You know, so he knows me as a kid, he knows me as a teenager, he knows me as a man, he's gonna know, know me even when I'm older. You know, so that's why I think our relationship is unique because he knows me. These guys, uh, they are legends because uh, the number retired in the team in Greece, you know how my number retired, so maybe in 15 years, 20 years, maybe my number is up there. Alright, ready guys? Here we go. We've got a TV commercial shoot. Uh, finished a deal three days ago, signed the contracts. It's got an eight hour production shoot, so we've got about 100 cast and crew here and drove up from Chicago, make sure everything is going okay. You know the spot, right? Mm -hmm. he said, uh, so in this instance, they had a creative concept that he's going to be throwing the ball off the backboard and doing a reverse dunk. It's just a matter of like your comfort level with what you want to do. We can play around with it and see how he feels, yeah. Okay. I said, guys, you know, this is the MVP candidate. There you go. There will be no dunking whatsoever, no dunking at all. And the conversations were, well, we're paying him to dunk. I said, no, you're paying him to be a brand ambassador. You're not paying him to dunk. Okay, here we go. 
at the end of the day, I made sure to set the expectations extremely low so that when he does do a couple dunks, they love it and everything ends up being great. And action. When does it click that you could be the best player in the world? Knocked away and stolen. Here's Middleton. Giannis trailing the lob. Oh! Giannis Antetokounmpo from Chris Middleton. When I came to the league, I saw other players, LeBron, Kobe, KD. They were special because they were consistent every night. These are the type of picks that you hope work out if you're a Bucks fan. Can I be consistent? Can I be mentally tough every night to hold my team? It was the beginning of my third year. I had 27 in the first uh, game. Giannis came soaring in. There was a look in his eyes that, like, I know I'm going to be unstoppable. But I talked to him and I told him, like, I can do this every night. Who's the MVP right now? Giannis. You say Giannis? Yeah. To me, Giannis is poised. I mean, he's been there all season long. Giannis closed it out for us, and uh, uh, we're showing that we could be one of the best teams in this league right now. These two would be the ones doing the first ever NBA All-Star Draft. They would be the captains. This gentleman will lead the Bucks in year one in their new home, Pfizer Forum, Giannis! The economic impact, like they call the Giannis effect in Milwaukee, it's unbelievable. You're talking ticket sales. You can't find a seat. You're talking all the way at the top. It's full. They're building an entire new stadium. They're knocking down the surrounding areas, building condos, building restaurants, hiring new people because of Giannis. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good bus that I hear. Growing up, me and my family didn't have much, and uh, there was a lot of organization in our community that helped us, uh, provide us with food. And my parents taught us what it means to give back and uh, to help the guy that's next to you. To have someone who is a player as good as Giannis, is someone who is charismatic, the fans love him. I mean, you can't put a price on that. So for the shoe to come out, everything gets locked in there. I don't, like, to me, I wouldn't even think about, like, worrying about overloading him or, like, you know how Giannis is, like, doesn't want to do too much. If you're telling him, like, this is where you're going, this is, you're launching your shoe, like, this is the one time where, like, yep. you do a lot. The only time you're going to ever launch your shoe for the first time. They've had 23 signature athletes, and he's the first international one that they've ever had. I really like you know, this relationship with Nike is that like I have a lot of input in the shoe. Let me see, let me see. Oh wow. Alex. <laughs> Give me some. <laughs> we almost did a deal with Nike before this one. This is how the story goes. He came up to me and said, okay, Nike wants to sign you for a multiple uh, year deal. I said, great, great news. I said yes. He came with the contract, and I look at the contract and I said. I'm not doing it. Like he was panicking and stuff, and I was like, I'm not doing it. Well, and then you said, you go talk to them, and I said, hold on. <laughs> so we've agreed, and I have to go back and tell them, hey guys, yeah, we had a deal, but no, we're not doing it. You believe in yourself, you're like, no, no, I know if I play the way I can, I'm gonna make more, you know? And it's full circle, we end up with Nike, and it's a great relationship, but you didn't believe it was gonna really happen. No. There was some days that you know, I was playing so much that my shoes had holes in them. 
There's other days that I had to wear the same person as my brother. But you know, I came to the NBA, we get 15 pairs of shoes every month. His work ethic is unparalleled. That's what I think has made him really successful. Here in Greece, when they learn the history, automatically they are getting motivated. I strongly believe that Yanis is the ambassador of hope. With the first pick, Team Yanis, I'm going to go with Steph Curry. Being in the NBA, I always describe it like when you're dreaming and uh, you do not want to wake up. That's how I feel right now. I feel like I'm always dreaming.